Okay, hi, hi everybody. Uh, welcome to this artificial neural network talk. Thanks for coming. And we are going to talk to you about artificial neural networks with PHP on a Symfony console tic tac toe game. So, we love that you've just said. So, to make this talk a little bit easier, we are going to walk through the talk, firstly, with a little demonstration about how our application works. Then, we're going to talk about Symfony Console and its helpers. After that, we're going to talk to you a little bit, promise, it's just a little bit, about artificial neural network theory, how to run them with PHP, and we're going to show you the code behind our application. And finally, we're going to run another, another demonstration with a dipping inside of the log files and what happens with our application inside the artificial neural network. So, uh, let's uh, start with the first, de first demonstration. Uh, well, he's a Eduardo, and I'm Ariel. Uh, we're going to see Eduardo playing versus the machine. And uh, here you can see, well, you can say hello, Hal. And here, this is our application, our tic-tac-toe game. You can see that the application, when it starts, asks you for a coordinate. This coordinate corresponds for each of the cells of the board and goes from 0, 0 to 2, 2. And when the game ends, it's going to ask you if you want to play again. So that's it. OK? A tic tac toe game. Easy. Now uh, let's talk about Symphony Console Component. So please raise your hand, uh, those who are using Symphony Console Component. Oof. Almost full house, okay, that's fine. But now raise your hand those who are using Symfony Console Component in a single tone application, or in a, in a, not in the Symfony Standard Edition. Okay, well, please use it. This component, is, this component, it's awesome, okay? So, and it's so easy to use it. To use these components in your applications will allow you uh, to create application or tools for your terminal, and it's so easy. You have to create a composer.json file with uh, require the Symfony Console package, install with composer, and then create a file with these few six lines. Okay? With these lines, then you can run your file with PHP being console, okay? and you will get these results, an awesome application in your console, okay? with, with colors, with formatting, etc. Okay, uh, if you are if you are planning to use uh, this component, please read this style guide. Uh, this guide, I think, it was created uh, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe a month or two months, and it's an incredible document created by Javier Aguilu. And you here here you will see how to output your information and the style you have to, to use, okay? Well, what about the helpers? Um, Symfony Console uh, Components include some helpers by default. Those helpers are simply pieces of code that allows you or helps you with some features. Progress Bar Helper uh, allows you to output some progress on the screen. For example, if you are downloading the file, if you are processing or importing or exporting that base, processing CVS file, okay, it will allow you to show the user the, how the process goes. Okay? So I suppose that all of you are techies, so we all techies love progress bars, so use it. Now table helper. Table helper um, allows you to output information as a table, as it, its name. Okay? But it allows you to add some headings, some colors, and formatting for the, for the table. Okay, so it's so easy to use it and very friendly for the user. Now question helper. Question helper lets you interact with the user. Uh, sometimes when you are using uh, console applications, you need information from the user. And the question helper allows you to do that. You have to create a question and say the console helper, please ask this question to the user, and you will get information in the bar. 
You have different types of questions. A confirmation question allows you to ask yes, no questions. Choice questions uh, allows you to set some choices and get the one choice or several choices. And you have then the question okay, that it's uh, anything you want. And now, formatted helper. The formatted helper allows you to output information uh, with a format. In this case, they have a section and blocks, as you can see here on the screen. Okay. But what else with helpers? In our application, in the tic-tac-toe game, we had a challenge that was the, the work helper for, for you. The work helper uh, was created because uh, we have to paint the board many times. And that we create this helper. The, help, the helper is customizable, so you can set the size of the board, you can set if you want the background itself, uh, or if you want to get the screen overwritten. The other challenge was to make the user, well, here you have uh, an example of four in a row game with background and cells. Okay? The other big challenge in the board helper was that we want the user to have the feeling that the screen is not repainted. It's just updated. Uh, how we can do that? It's so easy. With this line of code, if you, if you know a, um, a little bit, you have here a method called clear that outputs this instruction that clears the screen and sets the cursor at the end of the screen. So you can write again the full screen. And now, well, this seems to be a good audience. So we have a bonus helper for you. And this helper is called Hall. Probably, I don't know if you, many of you have watched the movie Odyssey in the Space. But, well, here you have the helper for, for output the hall. And now, let's Eduardo talk to us a little bit about artificial neural networks. Hello, everyone. Uh, so now we are going to see some theory. Uh, I promise it's going to be short. Uh, no, it's not short, but anyway. <laughs> so what are artificial neural networks? Uh, artificial neural networks are basically a computer model trying to emulate how the brain works. And uh, we do this by tackling uh, the, the modeling at uh, the first, um, the most small part of the brain, which are the neurons. So we are going to model the neurons and how the neurons communicate each other uh, inside the brain. So a uh, typical neural network is going to be divided in three layers uh, for three different main uh, functionalities. The first layer is uh, the input in the layer, uh, which is the place where our neural network is going to receive the information. Um, of course, it's composed of input neurons. Uh, <clears throat> the next layer in the, that's going to be uh, affected on how the information flows is uh, the hidden layer. It's not one layer. We can have as much uh, hidden layers as we want. Um, <clears throat> and it's filled of uh, hidden uh, neurons. Uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, called hidden because we can reach to it, uh, because, uh, but uh, because we are not going to interact directly with the hidden neurons or the hidden layers. And finally, the, the output layer, which is the one uh, which is going to uh, give us the feedback after we have processed the information through the neural network. As you see in, the, in, this, in this draw, um, we have uh, these this, uh, this rows, which represent uh, the signals. That's the other part of the model. Uh, the rows rep represents the connections between the different neurons. So initially, in a very uh, common or very simple neural network, uh, all the neurons in one layer are connected to all the other ne uh, neurons in the following layer. And besides uh, the signal, uh, we have the weight. What's the weight? Uh, the weight is a way of um, measuring the, the power of the signal that is coming to this neuron, signal or signals, right? So um, this, this is a really important uh, concept because it's uh, how we are going to calibrate the neural network to uh, produce the output we want uh, to, to receive. 
Okay, uh, so now that we know more or less how a typical neural network is, let's talk about activation functions, which is another important concept here. Um, uh, how our neurons are going to generate the signal for the following layer through activation functions. Activation functions uh, are the way or the functions inside our neuron that are going to capture all the inputs uh, multiplied by the weight and will produce an output which is the signal for the next layer, uh, for the next neurons in the next layers. So uh, there are lots of activation functions so you can write your own acti activation function. It's really important because uh, it's going to define how our neural network behaves and evolves. So we are going to, three, uh, we are going to see uh, three common activation functions. The first one is the step activation function. Uh, this one uh, will output zero or one, which is off or on, or on off, sorry. Um, it's basically used for uh, pattern detection. So uh, you can create a small neural network detecting a specific pattern, create many of these uh, for different patterns, and that uh, puts everything together and have uh, a bigger neural network which can detect different type of patterns. Uh, the next, it's the linear combination. Uh, so in the linear combination, the output is, uh, uh, is the input sum plus a linear bias. And finally, continuous log sigmoid, which is a really common used, commonly used uh, activation function because as, as we see on the graph, uh, it has a really smooth curve. So uh, we can have a, a wide range of outputs uh, for small changes in the input. This one is the, uh, it's the one we have used for, uh, for our neural network in the example we have seen. Um, you can set the activation function uh, in the hidden, in each neuron of the hidden layers and uh, uh, in the output layers, in the output neurons too. Okay, and another uh, very important concept, it's back propagation, which is a shortcut for backward propagation of errors, which in turn means uh, that we are going to propagate uh, the error we have obtained from this, uh, from this test so we can calibrate all the weights in the different neurons and the different signals we receive in order to improve the amount of error we have. Uh, we have. Uh, this is used uh, to train the neural networks. Uh, why? Can't we just manage the weights manually? Yes, we can, but uh, it's really a hard work because uh, neural networks usually don't have uh, just a few neurons. You are going to have a, a lot of them. And you have to test quickly to see if uh, what you have done uh, gives what you need, right? <clears throat> so now we know activation functions, we know back propagation. Let's see uh, quickly um, about the types of, activation of artificial neural networks we have. Again, this is just an overview um, of uh, three types. And there are a lot of them uh, for each kind of problem. So if you are interested in the, on this, just, uh, just investigate a little bit more. So uh, the first one is the feedforward neural network. And uh, this networks, uh, the information goes in only one direction. It's forward and it's the most uh, typical neural network. Um, and it's the one we have used, okay? Uh, we see them uh, when, we, when we see the code. The next two are real advanced ones, um, but it's like there is no small step be between the first one and, and the rest. So again, it's just an example. We have the real basis function network, which is an interpolation in a multidimensional space, and the common self-organizing network, which is a set of neurons uh, learn to map points in an, in an input space to coordinates in an output space. Good. So the um, the nice thing or the amazing thing about artificial neural networks is that they are ca capable of learning, of evolving. But uh, how we can do that? There are, again, three types of, uh, of uh, teaching or learning or training uh, of an artificial neural network. This, in this case, these are the three main uh, ways of uh, teaching. 
um, because are not a specific algorithm, but uh, how you uh, manage the, da the data uh, with the artificial neural network. So the first one, the most common, and w this is one you probably know, it's the supervised uh, uh, learning. In this, lear in, this, um, in this type of learning, you will give your artificial network during the training a set of inputs and the desired output for each of the inputs and the desired error level you want to achieve after uh, the run. So uh, in, in this kind of trainings, you need a really huge amount of data for the neural, 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 uh, sorry, neural network in order to achieve the error level uh, you want. Um, uh, one kind of uh, supervised learning, it's for uh, patterns matching or uh, uh, patterns matching and another one that I don't remember right now, sorry. So the next one is unsupervised um, learning. In this case, it's quite uh, similar to, to the other one, to supervised, but in this case, we are, not no, we are not going to give to the neural network what is supposed to expect. So we are going to give it only input data. Um, this, uh, this one, uh, this kind of neural networks are used for data mining in order to try to find patterns in the information we have. Okay, so we, we delegate to the neural network how she's going to find that. And finally, reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning uh, comes from psychology. We have, uh, it's a concept from psychology it's, uh, with the same name, which is reinforcement learning, positive reinforcement learning, uh, in which uh, for every action we try to give uh, and, um, a reward for that action, if that action is the one, the one we want. In the case of neural networks, uh, this is done by uh, um, registering the state or the environment in which the neural network is acting, having a goal, and uh, having a reward that is going to be updated um, regarding how well the neural network has done it to achieve that goal. Okay, so this one is the uh, type of learning we have uh, tried to apply for our tic-tac-toe game. Um, but and it's not the formal definition that we have implemented because um, there is one problem when you are uh, having, when you are using neural networks with reinforcement learning with games. And it's called, uh, sorry, it's the previous slide, and it's called temporal credit assignment problem. Why? Because in a game, uh, you don't know if what you have done is going to be good or bad. Because uh, you are going to know that uh, your movement was toward winning the game when the game ends most of the times, or after a period of time, or after a period of uh, movement, after some movement. So um, we'll see how, uh, on the code, we'll see how we try to solve this problem. Um, but it's not, uh, not quite easy. Okay, so what the fun are we talking about now, right? Artificial network with PHP, are you kidding me, right? Are you trolling me, right? It's computer science with PHP? No. It's amazingly easy to have uh, computer science or artificial neural networks uh, with PHP. Please meet Libfan and Pecklefan. Libfan is a C library for fast artificial neural network, which is quite common on the, um, um, on the academic circles, used for, um, uh, for experiments. And regarding that, I want, before we continue, uh, here we have the installation, installation instructions. They are really, really easy to do. Just tap apt-get, install libfan, peglin install fan, you are done. In half an hour, you have a neural network working that can learn to do X, uh, XOR uh, sorting, uh, sorry, um, logical um, door. So just uh, before we continue, <coughs> uh, I would like to tell you something. Um, a neural network is not the best solution for a tic-tac-toe game because tic-tac-toe game is a deterministic game and it's best resolved by the min-max algorithm, right? So uh, this is like uh, trying to kill, a, to kill a fly with a cannon. 
uh, but uh, we thought it was uh, kind of fun trying to uh, do a neural network different from the typical machine learning uh, stuff. So in a few minutes, you can enjoy your, your neural network. So um, as uh, Linus Torvald said, talk is cheap. Show me the code. So we are going to see now uh, some uh, interesting pieces of the code we have uh, done to try to implement this. So first, we are going to we'll go to fun standard. Fun standard is just a, a wrapper around uh, the fun library to be able to create easily uh, in, an, in, in an object-oriented way uh, our neural network. And we call it fun, a standard because uh, it's the standard neural network because you can create um, sparsely connected networks and short loop networks and so on. So, so as we can see here, we are going to create the layers um, with uh, the number of input neurons and output neurons and hidden that, uh, that we are receiving by construction. And then we create this helper function called fun create standard array, um, which is, okay, you just give it the number of layers and then the array of layers you want to create. In this case, it's a bit uh, rare because the first uh, index of the array has to be the input layer and the last one has to be the output layer and in the middle of the, all the hidden layers. It's a bit uh, complicated. Not complicated, but w weird. And finally, we can see here uh, how we set the activation functions for the hidden neurons, in all, for all the hidden neurons and for um, the output. And uh, we have set uh, the training algorithm to uh, train batch. Um, with, fun, you, uh, with the fine library, you can set the activation function for every single neuron. So if you want, you can set an, an activation function for uh, a different activation function for each of the neurons. Okay, uh, so now go to tic-tac-toe. I, artificial intelligence. Oh, okay, it's okay. Uh, artificial intelligence, which is a wrapper around the, wa the wrapper, uh, mainly because we, don't, we didn't want to tie uh, the, um, the console command to a fun implementation, but with an artificial implementation in case we want to implement min-max. Uh, okay, so quickly, uh, what we have here is nine input neurons, nine output neurons, three hidden layers, 27 neurons for each of the hidden layers. So as you can see, there are a lot of neurons, okay? And here we pass a file in case, uh, okay, to, um, in case we, we, we want to use an, uh, an already trained network uh, because we can save the network with all its trainings, okay? So uh, why 27? Well, because in our experiment, 27 give us good results, okay? But uh, for starting, uh, the the, um, the number of neurons should have been uh, input neurons plus output neurons, two thirds, sorry, two thirds of the sum of input and output neurons, which will give us 12 in our case. Okay, so go to tic tac toe, uh, the con con console, tic -tac -toe. the flam player first, okay. Okay, so here we have uh, the fun player. Uh, flam fun player is uh, the player we are going to use in our command uh, representing the artificial intel intelligence playing. Okay, so what we have here is the I board, which is a, a, it's a vector, it's not a matrix, because uh, the, the, um, we can't send the matrix to the neural network. We have to send uh, the number of neurons. And, uh, okay, I forgot to say it. We choose nine neurons because nine neurons represents all the possible positions on a tic-tac-toe board. We have nine positions, nine neurons, and we want to have uh, the full board as an output. Okay, so we have the, the next move, and here in this line, line 55, you see how uh, we pass the board, which uh, will have the current state of the board through the neural network, and we spec the, uh, the output. Uh, when we then sort the output, in order to have um, uh, what the neural network considers to be the best move. And the best move is going to be by the index of the array from zero to eight. So we want the one with the greatest value to be at the top. And then we log a lot of stuff that we are going to, we are going to, uh, to see later. And um, finally, 
uh, what we needed to do was to validate uh, what the neural network uh, outputted because um, in our model, the neural network can in sometimes uh, uh, give the best move one of the moves that has already, already been done, which means that we, cannot, we can't output an invalid move. We have to output a valid move, okay? So uh, let's go to the next one. Okay, tic-tac-toe game is just, uh, just the modeling of the game. Okay, it's going to have uh, the players who won and um, the board and the winning conditions, which uh, are basically the, all the, the three in a row and um, if the game ties, which is when there is no more movements. Okay, so tic-tac-toe. We'll go to the tic-tac-toe game. Oh, sorry, tic-tac-toe, the console command. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. So here, this is our command, right? This is a single command application. Um, so we just run the console and we play. And here, basically, uh, the important ones are uh, handle, uh, the handle human move, uh, handle computer move, this one, this one, and we'll see later the handle, handle end of match. Mm, what, why are they important? They are just a uh, helper method. But here in line 31, and, uh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, it's okay. 20 something and 31. We have this trainer which records the move of uh, the computer or for the human. Why? Uh, because uh, to solve this uh, temporal credit assignment problem, we decided to record uh, the match and then train the network based on what the human has made and what the computer has made. So finally here, what, when we do that, we do that at the end of each match. So when you play again against the neural network, the neural network supposedly is going to have uh, learned what you have done in the previous matches. So uh, here we train the AI with uh, the, the game status, which is we need to know who won because based on who won, we we know if uh, the human played well, or the computer played well, or if we both played well, which is a tie. Okay, so it's basically this method, which we'll call the train method on the trainer. So you can go with the trainer now, I think. Okay, uh, this is a trainer, right? Um, so here's where it's a kind of uh, magic happens in create training. Uh, we will, uh, based on who won, we are going to start backwards, okay? We are going to start from the end of the game uh, down to the beginning of the game because the important moves are the final ones. We have three moves only, but it's, uh, we need to go that way. And we need to create the input. The input is going to be the current state of the board, so in order for the neural network to know that for that input uh, neurons, which, is, which should be, had been, would, should be the output, sorry. So uh, we choose the, the input board and we then uh, create the output based on which was the real output uh, from the game. So if we have movement, movement, uh, the first movement, we are, knowing, we are not going to train the network uh, based on, uh, on, the, uh, on the second movement. We are going to use that as a template for generating the, the values we want to give it. So if you can see downwards, yeah, create output. Here we do that, uh, that stuff. So uh, here we have the weight for neutral movements and uh, we have the, al the alpha for uh, modificating the weights for the moves we want the neural network to, to, to use based on, well, the last weight and, and the number of trainings and uh, a few more things. Okay, so let's now see the dot, dot .dat file, okay? Yeah. Yes, uh, when using neural networks with FAN, we can create uh, training files. Training files uh, are used uh, in order to, you can create a huge training file with all that input data. Uh, so you can train it on its six minutes left. Okay, sorry, oh, I will go faster. Basically, this is a really short uh, up, uh, dot that file based on what we have trained the neural network just in the play that I have done uh, before. And it's basically 
number of uh, number of inputs and the number of, of neurons. We can talk about this later, so my friend can continue. All yours. Thanks. Well, thanks a lot for this artificial neural network masterclass. Yeah, <laughs> masterclass. Yeah. And now we are going to run the last demonstration uh, about what happens inside of our application. Okay, so. Yeah. Let's see how Eduardo plays again uh, tic-tac-toe. And you're going to have uh, two different logs oh, on the right, if Eduardo wants. <laughs> <laughs> the first on the top is the game log information, where you can see when the game starts, when a human makes a move, the artificial intelligence makes their own moves, and when the game ends. Okay? It's just that. On the bottom, uh, you're going to see the artificial neural network log information. So, uh, here, okay, as Eduardo told you before, when we want to use the artificial neural network, we have to give the artificial neural network an input. Our input corresponds to this line, okay? This line corresponds for the full board, and you can see the different cells, okay, from zero to eight, and different values. Those values correspond if the value is a minus one, correspond for the human move. If the value is one, correspond for the artificial inter intelligent move. And if it's a zero, correspond for a free cell, okay? Then the artificial neural network will throw the output. The output is here, okay? So I don't know if you can see very well with these colors, uh, but here you can see the weights for each of the positions available in the, in the board, okay? And now you can see the position here sorted. So the artificial neural network will try to do the first, the four position move, eight, one, zero, etc. And we have we are going to fetch the first the first move. We are going to validate. If it's valid, we are going to play this move. If it's not valid, we are going to gain to get the second move and so on until we have a valid move. Okay. After that. We are going to record, as you can see here, the move, okay? And when the game ends, here we have to create a training. This is the training that Eduardo told you before, the .dat file, okay? And here you can see the weights, the different weights. In this case, probably uh, Eduardo wins the match, okay? So we have here a zero value in the last position that's why, that's because the artificial neural network plays this move and lose. The other weights are calculated backwards, as Eduardo told, told you, because we don't know the, we know the state at the end of the game, and those values are calculated with a formula that, if you want, we can show you later. <laughs> it's a bit complicated. And that's all here. Okay, so come back to Keynote, thanks. That's well. me again. <laughs> so, now we know a little, bit, a little more about the artificial neural network, and we can say that we don't always make artificial neural networks, but when we do, we make them with PHP. Okay. So, behind this talk, there are two neurons. Uh, the first neuron is Eduardo. You can follow him at Twitter, on, or, Twitter or GitHub at Egulias. He simply collaborated with him at Validator, listener demo command bundle, He's PHP Madrid user group co-founder, and he works as a team leader at Packlink. And the other network is, is me. I'm Mario Ferrandini. You can follow me at GitHub or Twitter at Ferrandini. I'm also a Symfony collaborator with Simple, Symfony Simple Password and Color Service and Symfony DX app. And also I'm a Madrid, PHP Madrid user group co-founder, and I work as a team leader at Paradigma Tecnológico. So, now, if you want to get introduced in artificial neural networks, uh, here you have some resources, some links. For example, in Wikipedia, you have a, a, a more stern uh, theory about artificial neural networks, some introduction for beginners, uh, some introduction to reform and learning, and the documentation for the binding of the fund library. Okay? And here you have the other, some other resources that are our code. Okay, so here we have created the PHP Games organization. So if you want to contribute, please feel free. Uh, well, thank you for coming. And if you have any question, feel free to ask. <laughs>